Our next speaker is Eugene Lee, and he's going to uh, talk about ammonia of um, amoxidation of ethane to acetonitro. some recent work uh, we did at Air Products. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Air Products and Chemicals, especially John Armour, uh, for giving me the opportunity working there for many years and uh, the support over the years for this project and uh, other dogs related work. And I also like to take this opportunity as a former student, uh, Professor Keith Hall, to express my sincere appreciation uh, for the guidance I received and the opportunity to work with him uh, in 89 and 90 while uh, working on NO decomposition uh, chemistry over copper exchange zeolite. And that was my first time uh, working on zeolite related uh, catalysis. And I agree with John Armour, and uh, I tend to think also that uh, all my subsequent work and it's an extension of the work uh, from uh, uh, Professor Keith Hall's lab at the uh, University of Pittsburgh. What I go I'm going to talk about today is cobalt exchange uh, zeolite, and especially uh, this and phi as a catalyst to convert ethane to uh, acetone nitrile in the presence of ammonia and nitrogen, uh, 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 oxygen. some background uh, about this reaction, uh, what is the motivation uh, we work on this problem, and give you some overview about this reaction and side reactions, and very brief summary about catalyst screening. I want to spend some time on uh, some temperature program uh, desorption reactions and try to study the interaction between the reactant product and cobalt system 5 and trying to get insight uh, about this reaction. And then I'm going to propose a mechanism for nitrile formation and I'm going to draw the Over the couple of years, we identified that uh, 
some cobalt exchange zeolite and really a uh, very effective catalyst for this reaction. And I'm going to do some uh, comparison uh, between uh, typical oxide and cobalt exchange zeolite to see their uh, difference in uh, efficiency. But uh, before doing that, I want to show you the complexity of this reaction. We're not only dealing with uh, one reaction, actually we have uh, many uh, reactions. Here is just uh, some of them. Um, we also produce a lot of uh, propylene during this process. And presumably uh, from uh, the oxidative dehydrogenation I think, and we also have a CO2 formation, CO formation. This can be uh, coming from uh, I think combustion and also can be a product as <coughs> combustion. And we also have nitrogen. The obvious reaction will be ammonia oxidation to produce nitrogen. And we do have a trace amount of HCN formation over cobalt zeolite. And we believe this is really a, the, the product of uh, all of them ammonia reaction in the presence of oxygen on the bronzed acid side. We can have very nice correlation between the bronzed acidity of the catalyst and the uh, HCN formation. We do have trace of uh, C3 nitrile, propyl nitrile, and the obvious reaction we suspect is the propylene reacting with uh, HCN to form propyl nitrile. We have screened uh, many different kinds of oxides, uh, typically for selected oxidation, even for propane, propenum oxidation reactions. Here I just compare some of them with uh, cobalt beta. Here we have vanadium, uh, vanadium phosphate, uh, antimony vanadate, and these two, this used typically as an oxidation catalyst, this is uh, used as a propane oxidation catalyst. Uh, you can see the, the reaction rate and the yield are quite low. These two catalysts reported in patent literature for acid amoxidation reactions. Indeed, they are better than these two, however, um, still not high enough compared to cobalt exchange beta zeolite. In this case, we have silicon to aluminum ratio 14 and cobalt to aluminum ratio 0.35. And the reaction rate and yield about one to two orders magnitude higher than the rest of the metal oxide catalyst. And realize that uh, we also run slightly lower temperature than all, all these catalysts because if we run lower temperature for these oxide catalysts, we will not be able to see uh, any conversion. We realize uh, cobalt return zeolite have some special features for this reaction. Um, we subsequently did a lot of screening work and to change the metal and also the type of zeolite we use. Uh, first, uh, let's talk about uh, the effect of metal. We exchanged different metal ions into this phi structure and we found cobalt is the best element for this reaction. And we also found some other um, elements also active for this uh, reaction, like nickel, iron, and manganese. However, their selectivity and conversion um, are much lower than cobalt. And for these three elements, they have the order nickel is better than iron, iron is better than manganese. We tested uh, lots of other elements, including copper, silver, uh, palladium, rhodium, platinum, ruthenium. Um, we do not have any, uh, obtain any acetyl nitrile. I believe these metals are very active for ammonia oxidation. Uh, basically, we obtain this nitrogen and some byproducts. And the hydrocarbon conversion is very low. For 
CLI structure, uh, we have tested uh, basically all the type of CLI we can get uh, purchased and made. Uh, here is uh, some comparison. Um, we found that system 5, uh, beta, NU87, and system uh, 11 um, are quite good for this reaction. They are better than modernized uh, Y, CLI A, operatite, ferrite, and and I'm a uh, ferrite better than cobalt uh, supported on um, alumina. Uh, this basically has zero uh, yield for acetonitrile formation. What we found uh, was uh, if we use one dimensional zeolite, uh, basically we do not have uh, much of activity or yield for acetonitrile formation. And it requires two dimensionality or multi-dimensionality better if you have the cage structure. If you have two-dimensional zeolite uh, like a ferrite, if one of the channel is small, like A member ring, and we found that in fact essentially that A member ring is non-functional. Here we are dealing with uh, three molecule uh, reactions. We have ammonia, ethane, and oxygen. Uh, imagine if uh, one, ch one of the channels, uh, like a membrane channel, is slow down uh, diffusion, you essentially have one-dimensional uh, one uh, zeolite -like structure. I think one of the exceptions here is the zeolite Y. And uh, zeolite Y has all these uh, essential requirements, and the larger four uh, entrance and the three-dimensional structure. However, and uh, the activity here is not uh, compatible with uh, all these uh, basic features requirements. But uh, as we found later, that uh, we can make zeolite Y as more effective, selective, uh, more selective and uh, highly active. We have to do some uh, treatment on zeolite Y. And that uh, actually is the subject of our uh, publication uh, we are preparing. The next, I want to just focus on cobalt exchange system 5. And this is the typical temperature uh, profile for the reaction expressed here, conversion and selectivity. Uh, I do not have all the product selectivity here, but these are the major selectivities. Um, the conversion slightly increased with increasing temperature, and the Isotonic nitrile selectivity is generally high, starting from uh, over 50%, gradually decreasing with increasing temperature. And opposite trend you can find for selectivity to ethylene is quite high. We found a lot of ethylene produced, but uh, the ethylene uh, selectivity increased with increasing temperature. And the selectivity to CO2 is uh, rather flat and low. So we like to further investigate um, ethylene, and we first suspect maybe ethylene is really uh, active uh, hydrocarbon here. Maybe we first uh, produce ethylene by oxidative dehydrogenation, and ethylene further uh, go on to, to do the um, oxidation reaction to produce uh, acetyl nitrile. So here we have comparison side by side. Ethylene amount station and ethylene amount station with identical feed except uh, the C2 here is ethane and C2 here is ethylene at two different temperatures, 450 and 500 degrees C. Uh, first, uh, we observe the conversion for ethylene is much higher than ethane. And if we look at the yield formation of the acetonitrile and the, for ethylene, the yield is about uh, uh, more than two times compared to, to ethane amount station. And also very interesting, uh, the CO2 selectivity are the same for two reactions. And if we further analyze this, uh, we found that the total C2 selectivity, that is the, uh, the combination of acetonitrile and ethylene, 
if you add them together, it's about 80%, which is uh, uh, quite similar to the acetonitrile uh, selectivity for the acetylene oxidation. So our first thought would be uh, maybe we have to make uh, acetylene and uh, acetylene uh, go on for an oxidation reaction. But actually it's much, uh, I think it's a bit more complicated than that. Uh, I'm comparing in this table uh, actually a, a two feed, a feed one only acetylene and ammonia. And feed two, basically identical except uh, we have 10% of ammonia added. Uh, what we found uh, was at 400 degrees C, uh, with only acid and oxygen, we produce most uh, uh, CO2, uh, very little acetylene. So the yield is very low, only 4%. Uh, in this feed, we add 10% of uh, ammonia. We found not only conversion increase, of course we produce an isotone nitrile, uh, yield 15%. And the nice formation of acetylene is even higher than this. And we were kind of a puzzle at the beginning on why to add some ammonia, the acetylene formation even increased. And uh, that's in addition to uh, acetyl nitrile formation. A uh, similar trend we found at a higher temperature. At higher temperature, uh, the, for the oxidative dehydrogenation reaction, we see the acetylene formation uh, selectivity actually uh, even decrease. We produce even more higher level of CO2, which is 82%. In the end, even though we have higher conversion, the yield is not the same. And in this case, we have even higher uh, uh, nitrile formation, higher uh, uh, acetylene formation, uh, only if we add some ammonia to the peak. Uh, look like ammonia does something um, on the catalyst, uh, therefore uh, uh, promoting the acetylene formation and also uh, acetyl nitrile. Um, I should point out that if we don't have ammonia, we found the catalyst uh, was black and obviously there was coating uh, going on. And cobalt is very reactive with the feed one. Uh, so we've observed some um, uh, acetylene formation during the uh, acetylene amoxidation reaction, and we suspect acetylene is really the uh, reactive hydrocarbon uh, for the amoxidation reaction. We also uh, observe that ammonia promotes uh, acetylene formation, and, uh, and also dramatically increase the total C2 yield. And we were not sure what, what was the nature of the uh, ammonia uh, effect. So what I'm going to do is to use ethylene amoxidation as a uh, model reaction to simplify the investigation to try to get some uh, insight on uh, this reaction and show you some interactions between uh, single molecule uh, reactions and product with cobalt exchange system 5. And from that, hopefully, we can uh, uh, get some understanding on this reaction. First, I'm going to show you um, ammonia absorption and desorption on cobalt exchange system 5, and in comparison with H system 5. Uh, this has been reported uh, ammonia H system 5 uh, on literature many times. And typically, we found the high temperature desorption peak is associated with the bronze acidity. Uh, in this case, we use uh, SIL ratio 11 uh, system 5. We calcine at 550 for a few hours, and therefore, it's uh, it's expected we will have some de-elimination even during the calcination process. And the TGA analysis indicate we have alumina, uh, ammonium to aluminum ratio 0 0.76. This aluminum is bulk aluminum. 
Um, this is quite a typical number because we have some degree of deillumination. What was surprising was the, of the ammonia absorption on coho system 5 was quite uh, intense even at high temperature and there was no uh, particular peak observed. Actually, it's all the continuous declining. Even at 500 degrees C, we still see a lot of ammonia uh, coming out from the catalyst. Look like continue going on. And using TGA, we quantify the number of ammonia cutting out from 285 to 550, about 1.8 ammonia per cobalt which suggests that uh, in this temperature it's possible that you have two ammonia molecules dissolved on a single cobalt ion, uh, which is very important for this reaction. We also look at um, ethylene absorption on cobalt system 5. Here I also compare uh, ethylene absorption to ammonia absorption. Um, what I want to indicate is um, basically uh, at temperature higher than 360 degrees, you do not see much of ethylene stay on catalyst. And our reaction basically conducted uh, between 400 to 500 degrees C. And so it will be logical to expect uh, under reaction condition, the dominant absorbed species will be ammonia. And it's not uh, ethylene. Acetyl nitrile is the product uh, we want, but uh, acetyl nitrile is also a, a, a wonderful molecule to, to characterize uh, Lewis uh, acid. Here we did uh, acetyl nitrile TPV two ways. First, um, we, uh, we saturated cobalt system 5 and then uh, did the TPV in helium. And this is a typical TPV experiment. We found that lots of acetyl nitrile uh, uh, dissolve even at a very high temperature. And uh, look like acetyl nitrile held on the cat very strongly. And if we integrate this area, it uh, corresponds to 1.9 acetyl nitrile per cobalt. However, this reaction was uh, conducted uh, in the presence of other gases, especially ammonia. We also did a TPD experiment uh, in flow of uh, ammonia helium mixture. And the first part was the same. Uh, acetyl nitrile was uh, flow through the catalyst, saturate the catalyst, and then at 100 degrees C, we flow um, 3,000 ppm of ammonia heating mixture and to, uh, to, to flush the system. We observe a lot of uh, acetyl nitrile dissolve even at 100 degrees C. Um, and then run the temperature uh, to see we have much smaller desorption peak and this corresponds to 70% uh, uh, less of acetyl nitrile dissolved uh, compared to, uh, to the case in here. Uh, I think that implies that uh, even absorption of uh, acetyl nitrile is very strong, but in the presence of ammonia, especially during the reaction conditions, we typically use 10% uh, of ammonia at uh, inlay concentration. And acetyl nitrile will be very uh, readily dissolved under those conditions. One thing we really would like to know is uh, what is the re uh, reactive intermediate? Um, this um, experiment we did, hopefully, uh, I show you uh, the reaction intermediate. Uh, this is a temperature program reaction. First, we absorb a uh, pre-absorbed cobalt system 5 with uh, ammonia uh, at room temperature. And 
and then they flow the mixture of acetylene, 5% five per, five of acetylene, 5% of oxygen in helium through the catalyst and run, run the temperature. At 350 C, we can see oxygen uh, starting uh, going down, and so was uh, acetylene. At about 400, uh, 430 to 140, you can see there's dramatic decrease, and oxygen was completely depleted at 450 degrees C. And we still have some uh, uh, line of uh, acetylene formation. Um, coincide this uh, change, we see uh, isomitral formation starting from 350 as a sharp increase. And at 450, you can see a dramatic decrease of uh, Acetone nitrile formation. And right at this temperature, we observe uh, isomine formation, which was quite interesting. And uh, we really think that uh, isomine here is the uh, reactive intermediate. And uh, it's well known that uh, isomine can be readily uh, dehydrogenated, convert to uh, isotone nitrile. And the fact that we see these uh, as a mean formation, uh, because of, uh, at this time we do not have oxygen uh, in, the in the gas phase. If we do, we will see a lot of isotope nitrile. And therefore, I think uh, we were able to see the uh, amine formation here. We have conducted several experiments uh, using amine as a rea uh, reactants. Uh, we indeed uh, observe uh, is isotope nitrile form uh, uh, formation as a major product. Um, here is one of the experiments we conducted. Uh, this is temperature program um, reaction of, of ethylamine. We pre-absorb ethylamine and then run it the temperature in the presence of ammonia and oxygen uh, heating mixture. We see uh, the acetone nitrile formation is a major product along with some reversible desorption of uh, uh, amine. We also did this uh, at a steady state feed uh, amine uh, in the presence of oxygen and all kinds of mixtures. Um, we observe uh, isotope nitrile formation as a major product. So based on the information, uh, I'd like to propose the following reaction mechanism for the uh, nitrile formation. Uh, we believe that ammonia absorption is very important and the working catalyst perhaps uh, if the cobalt is hydroxylated Cobalt. And this is a reversible process and depend on the temperature. And the other important feature is um, we think that ethylene ad addition to ammonia is very uh, essential step to form um, a dissolved amine uh, species. This amine species will, will, will be uh, dehydrogenated by uh, the following two steps to form acetone nitrile. First by internal dehydration and, and then by uh, oxidative dehydrogenation of these intermediate species to form acetone nitrile. And acetone nitrile desorption is a reversible process. It is accelerated by the presence of ammonia. What I want to emphasize is this step. And it is known that ammonia aldehyde uh, addition reaction can occur, but this reaction is not thermodynamically favorable in gas phase. Um, here we have um, uh, both absorbed species amine and ammonia. We also have uh, the subsequent dehydrogenation reaction, which can uh, very easily to break the equilibrium to push the reaction going this way. Um, I want to show you uh, slides on higher uh, alkane amoxidation. If we uh, use propane and 
built and or even higher plant and what would uh, we expect? Do we uh, obtain the corresponding uh, higher nitrile? What uh, acetyl nitrile? Uh, the point I want to make is uh, the addition reaction is very important. This is a propane amount station reaction. Uh, to our surprise, uh, we did not obtain a lot of pro uh, propane nitrile. Instead, we obtained a large quantity of acetyl nitrile and CO2, and also a lot of uh, propane formation. And the propane nitrile actually is about 1%, 1 or 2%, and at least some C1 products. And we did the same react the reaction for C4, C5, and uh, no exception, we obtain uh, acetyl nitrile. So, what happened um, here? We think really there is all of the addition reaction. Um, the similar to Markov Nikov addition, and NH2 added to the uh, beta position here, and to form. Uh, this uh, amine uh, molecule uh, because uh, adsorbed amine here, ammonia here is really immobile. Uh, rather, the uh, protein added to adsorb uh, ammonia. And in the presence of oxygen, we will form a CN triple bond. At the same time, we break the uh, carbon carbon bond. Therefore, we see acetyl nitrile and C1 product. I think this is consistent with the proposal that there's a digital reaction that uh, all of them added to the absorbed ammonia molecule. <coughs> In conclusion, we uh, discovered uh, acid can be effectively converted uh, to acetyl nitrile over uh, cobalt exchange zeolites. And we believe that ethylene uh, is a reactive hydrocarbon intermediate. And we also think that ethyl amine is a reactive intermediate for the nitrile formation. And we believe uh, this reaction goes through uh, the following steps from ethylene, ethylene, amine, and nitrile. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. For one quick question, perhaps to Alex. Uh, Eugene, would you care to speculate on how the oxidative dehydrogenation of ethane to ethylene occurs? Because that seems to be a critical first step. Once you have that, everything else looks plausible. Right. Um, even though that ammonia is its dominant species on coal side, but uh, at higher temperature, we expect still has some sites available to do the oxidative dehydrogenation of ethane to, to, to ethylene. Um, I believe it's a subsequent dehydrogenation, take one hydrogen at a time, and uh, until you form uh, ethylene. But uh, we are not sure uh, the elementary step, uh, the detail uh, on the oxidative dehydrogenation. What's hard to see is that when we try to put oxygen, O2 onto cobalt, CSN5, right. it's a stick. How do you activate the oxygen? Molecular right. oxygen. That's the critical step. We're not sure at this point. Just to be quick, please. For the propane oxidation, how much propane do you have to protect? How much? Selectivity for propane. Propane. Propane selectivity is very high. Over. to 32% uh, depending on the temperature. A lot of protein produced.